Have you ever wanted to make an audio level meter in Blender? Hi, I'm Micah Matichuk for 2EasyCG, and today I'm going to show you how to do it. We're going to start with an empty scene. Let's add a plane, go to front view, go to edit mode and rotate by 90 degrees on the x-axis. Now scale it down to, I don't know, 0.5, should be good. Grab it along the Z and move it so it's sitting on the floor. Select the top two vertices, Control H to add a hook. This hook will help us control the aspect ratio of the individual lights in the stack. To keep tidy, we can start naming things. This big block we'll call meter. And this one we can call meter aspect. Now we'll want to make sure that this aspect hook is parented to the meter. So that if we move the meter, it'll move the hook as well. Now we really don't want the hook to go skewing to the left or right, so we can actually turn off transforms for everything but the z-axis in the object properties panel. Now when we grab it and move it, it can only move up and down. But we also don't want it moving below the floor, because that just doesn't make sense. So we'll add a constraint to limit location to be above Z0. Now, if we try to move it below the floor, it'll just stop. We'll also want to turn on Effect Transform and set the owner space to local space. We don't want our aspect going below a value like 0 0.05, and you'll see why later. We'll also want to add a few more empties to help us control things. The first one we'll call Meter Height. Limit its transforms to only the Z axis, and move it up a fair distance. Add a constraint that limits its location to be above zero, and remember to switch to local space. We'll also add another one, and we're going to call it meter spacing. Limit transformation to only the Z, and move it up somewhere in the middle. For this one, we're going to add a constraint that limits its location to be above one meter. Remember to affect transform and set local space as well. Now both of these empties that we just added should also be parented to the original meter object. Double check to make sure that we've done things right. The top empty shouldn't be able to go below the floor. Negative height wouldn't make sense. The middle one, which controls our spacing, should only be able to go down to one and not below. Now let's add the last two empties. The first one we'll call meter yellow. The second one we'll call meter red. Remember to limit transformation only to the Z for both of them. The red one we should move somewhere near the top. So somewhere near the top empty, which is the meter height. The yellow should be somewhere closer to the middle. For the red one, let's add the limit location constraint. For minimum Z, we're going to add the regular zero. For maximum Z, we're going to add a driver. We can do this by pressing Control D. For type, we can set averaged value. Down here, we'll set Z location in local space of meter height. Of course, effect transform, local space, that should be a habit for all these constraints. All right, what we've done is we've made it so that this meter red, which marks where the red portion of the meter starts, cannot go below the floor and cannot go above the top. For the yellow, we'll add a constraint that limits the Z minimum to zero and the Z maximum, we're gonna add another driver. And this time we're going to limit the Z location to be only below meter red. This makes it so it can't go below the floor and it can't go above the meter red marker. As usual, select both of these and parent them to the meter. Alright, now it should look something like this. If we grab the main object and move it around, it should move everything around. Now it's time for the fun to begin. Select the main meter object, add an array modifier. For fit type, we're going to select fit length and we're going to add a driver here. In the driver, we're going to select average value, and then we're going to select the Z location in local space of meter height. Now under relative offset, let's zero everything but the Z. For the Z, we're going to add a driver. Again, select average value, and then the Z location in local space of meter spacing. You might have to update dependencies. Now you should see something like this. This doesn't really look like a meter. What we can do is we can grab our aspect empty and drag it down to create more of the aspect ratio of an LED light. 
Now we can grab our meter spacing empty and move it wherever we want. If we move it all the way down to 1, the lights will be right against each other, and it'll look like a block. If we move it up, the lights will be farther away from each other. This is how we can control the look of our meter. We're almost ready to move on to materials, but first select the meter, and to make things easier, go to the Object Properties panel, to Viewport Visibility, and turn on Texture Space. You should see a block that covers a small area at the bottom, like this. We want this block to cover the entire meter's height. Go over to the Object Data Properties panel, open up Texture Space, and turn off Auto Texture Space. You can set the Y size to zero because our meter has no depth. The X size matches the width of the mesh, as you can see. We are going to control the Z location and Z size of the Texture Space with a driver. Press Control D. This time, we'll leave the type as Scripted Expression. Go down and set Z location in local space of meter height. This time we want half of that, so because this data is var, we're going to write var divided by 2. This is going to give us half that value. The meter height empty is at 3 meters, so we return a value of 1.5 meters. Now we copy this driver to the Z size and paste. As you can see, the texture space block now covers the entire meter perfectly. If we grab the meter height empty and move it, it'll also change the size of the texture space box around the meter. Congratulations! It's now time to move over to the shader editor. Split the view, set shader editor. Make sure the meter is selected and create a new material. Call the material, say, uh, meter. Also, we want to see what we're doing. So set the viewport shading to rendered. Over here in the shader editor, we don't actually need the principled BSDF at the moment, so we'll just delete it. The first node we'll add in is a texture coordinate node. Then we'll add a separate XYZ node. We will feed the data from generated to the vector input. Now if we view the Z, you'll see that the Z goes from 0 at the bottom to 1 at the top of our meter. We'll also want to add a combine RGB node right here. As you can see, if we plug into the R, we get a red gradient, whereas if we plug into the green, we get a green gradient. We don't really want a gradient at all. What we want is green on one portion of the meter and red on another portion. The mix between the two will be the middle yellow portion. The way we're going to do that is we add a math node. This one will make greater than, and we'll plug it into the red. This means that the meter will be red above whatever threshold we set here, so we can move it up and down. We'll duplicate the math node and set it to less than. Make sure it also has the same Z input. This time we'll plug it into the green. At the moment, our meter is split between red and green. But if we overlap the two areas, the mix is yellow. However, one thing you may notice is that if we adjust it just the right amount, one of the lights on the meter is actually split between two colors. We don't want that, so we're going to fix it. First, let's add value nodes to control the value inputs of the greater than and less than nodes. This one will go here, this one will go here. Now between one of the value nodes and one of the math nodes, we're going to add another math node. This one will be multiply. Then we'll duplicate it and make it a round node. Then we'll duplicate it again and make it a divide node. Now the reason we're going to multiply round and then divide is because the round node doesn't have an input for increments. It only has an increment of 1. So we're going to multiply our value by the number of the lights in our stack, round the value to the nearest whole number, and then divide by the same amount. Since we're multiplying and dividing by the same amount, we're going to add another value input and plug it into the value of both the multiply and divide. This will make it easy to control. Now for this value, we're going to make another driver. It's going to be a scripted expression. Since we want this to be the number of lights in the stack, we're going to start with the height of the stack. Set the Z location in local space of meter height. Now, make a second variable. We can call this var2. This one will be the Z location in local space of meter aspect. The reason for this is that if we had no meter spacing, the actual distance between the lights would actually just be the individual heights of the lights, which is controlled by the aspect empty. 
Finally, we're going to add var3. This one is going to be the z location in local space of meter spacing. Meter spacing is essentially a multiplier for the meter aspect value. So if our meter spacing empty is at 2, we essentially have twice the space between the same point on each light as we would if there was no spacing. To find the number of lights in the stack, we're going to do var, which is the meter height, divided by the height of the individual lights, multiplied by the spacing multiplier. Don't forget to add parentheses around the last two variables so they are multiplied first before being used as the denominator of the entire expression. Right now it has a value of 7.5. Of course, our stack doesn't have half a light, but this decimal value is actually what we're looking for. Now, try changing this value input. You'll notice that now none of the lights ever have two colors. The colors cover an entire light at a time. This block of nodes right here is what allows us to snap the colors to whole blocks. So we're going to select them and press Ctrl G to make it a group. See how much cleaner everything looks now? Well, we applied it for the red, but we didn't apply it for the green. So what we're going to do now is duplicate this node group and put it in between the value for the green and the less than node. Now the green can be adjusted in the same way. Of course, you may wish to name some of the nodes so you know what they do. We'll name this node yellow and this node red for reasons you'll see soon. For the value of the one we called yellow, let's add a driver. Leave it as scripted expression. For the first variable, we'll set z location in local space of meter yellow. This gives us the location of our meter yellow empty. However, we actually want its ratio to the height of the meter. So we'll add a second variable, which we can call r2. And this one will be the z location in local space of meter height. Now we'll do the location of meter yellow divided by the location of meter height. This gives us basically a percentage of the height. We'll copy this driver from this node to this node. We'll edit it. And for this one, instead of meter yellow, we'll set meter red. If we look over here in the viewport, you can see that by selecting meter red, we can control where the red level starts. But by moving the meter yellow empty, we can control the size of the yellow portion in the middle. So essentially, this empty right here actually controls where the red starts and moves up from. The other one controls where the green starts and moves down from. The intermediate portion is yellow. We're actually almost done. Now we just need a way to control the level that's being displayed on the meter. The way we'll do that is by adding a mix RGB node and setting it to multiply. Make sure the factor is 1. Over here we'll duplicate our less than node. Make sure it has the z input as value. And we'll plug it into the second color input of the multiply node. Now if you change the threshold value, we're actually blacking out the top portion of the meter. We'll also need the color snapping group for this input as well. So duplicate it and add it as the input for the threshold of the less than node. Now let's add another value node to be the input of this color snapping group. If we adjust the value of this node, you can see we actually control the level being displayed on the meter. At 0, the meter is completely black. At 1, the meter is completely lit up. This is actually where we can add our audio. All you gotta do is insert a keyframe. Now, go to the graph editor. Because our node is still selected, you can see the F curve for the keyframe we just added. Go down to key and click bake sound to F curves. You can select any audio file you want. In this case, I'm going to select a music track, which I downloaded from Audio Library Plus on YouTube. Here you can see we have some options that we can change. We can set the frequency portion that's being used. There's another tutorial that actually details how to do this. Attack time will actually determine how fast the meter will rise with a sudden rise in audio amplitude. Release time will define how fast the meter will lower after a loud sound. Let's set a value of, say, 0.5. Now, bake sound to F-curves with this button. As you can see, we now have a curve here in the F-curve editor. Another thing you can see is that it actually goes above 1 here. So let's add an F-curve modifier. We'll use the envelope modifier. Click Add Point. This will allow us to control the range of the curve. Find some of the highest peaks to help you know where to adjust. 
Now just adjust the envelope values so that the curve lies between 0 and 1. Now it should look something like this, where 1 is above the top of the waves. Now if we play our animation, you'll notice something incredible is happening. Our lights are lighting up. It just so happens that this music track starts very quietly. So we might want to adjust it so that the lights are packed more closely together to prevent the bottom light from flickering. Or we can simply grab the top and drag it up to make our meter higher. Remember to set the levels for red and yellow appropriately. Of course, we may also want to hear our audio. So we can go over to the video sequencer, go to frame one and add the audio as a strip. Now when we play the audio, we can hear it as well as see the level on our meter. Here's what it looks like when we play a louder portion. Now we can begin to actually change some of the render settings. We can set the background to black. We can enable bloom. Also, in our material, if we want to control the actual brightness of the lights, we can add a hue saturation node. The value we set will actually be the brightness of the lights. We can set it as high as we want. If we set it to 10, look what happens. We'll have some fun with this. That sure looks bright. Now the great thing about the way we rigged up our meter is that we can actually select it and scale it. We can scale it up, we can scale it down. The colors won't change, the meter won't change, everything will actually work great no matter what scale we use. We can also rotate it however we like. Let's say we rotate it at an awkward angle like this. We can still control the height using this empty and control the levels using these empties. Just like this. And of course we can control the spacing and the size and whatever else we want to control with these. Here you can actually see why we didn't want the value of our aspect going below a certain value such as 0 0.05. Because if we set this to zero and we drag this down, the array will actually try to create too many objects. Of course one thing that we can do now that we're practically done is add back in our principled BSDF or maybe even an emission BSDF would be fine. And we want to feed our color into the emission. At the moment that's going to look pretty much like what we've already had. Now there's a couple tips I just wanted to add in here. Uh, for one thing, we added these meter red and meter yellow markers to help us control where those portions of the meter start. Actually, you might not want to do that at all. We can actually delete these and go over here and delete the drivers that they controlled and set these to reasonable levels like say 0.6 and 0.9 and uh, just see just to see the meter full we can do that and you'll see that as we scale the meter up and down the red and yellow portions actually scale to the appropriate levels which is perhaps what we actually want. Another thing you're going to notice is that sometimes the last bar is actually going to be black. That's because the rounding node, if you're at below 0.5, it's actually going to round down, but if you're at 0.5 or above, it's going to round up to 1. So round isn't really the best thing for this. What we actually want is ceiling. And with ceiling, you're never going to have a black bar at the end if the input is 1. Well, that was how to make an audio level meter in Blender. If you enjoyed it, leave a like. If you have a comment, leave it below. This is actually the first Blender tutorial I've ever made. You can find me on Twitter, on Instagram, or on my website that I haven't actually finished developing yet. And I'm actually planning to start uploading stuff on my own YouTube channel soon.